Buddhist texts were initially passed on orally by monks, but were later written down and composed as manuscripts in various Indo-Aryan languages which were then translated into other local languages as Buddhism spread. They can be categorized in a number of ways. The Western terms, scripture, and canonical, are applied to Buddhism in inconsistent ways by Western scholars, for example, one authority refers to scriptures and other canonical texts. While another says that scriptures can be categorized into canonical, commentarial and pseudo-canonical. Buddhist traditions have generally divided these texts with their own categories and divisions, such as that between Buddhavacana, word of the Buddha, many of which are known as sutras, and other texts, such as shastras treatises, or abhidharma. These religious texts were written in many different languages and scripts but memorizing, reciting and copying the texts were of high value. Even after the development of printing, Buddhists preferred to keep to their original practices with these texts. Buddhavacana Traditional criteria According to Donald Lopez, criteria for determining what should be considered Buddhavacana were developed at an early stage, and that the early formulations do not suggest that Dharma is limited to what was spoken by the historical Buddha. The Mahasamgika and the Malasarvastavada considered both the Buddha's discourses, and of his disciples, to be Buddhavacana. A number of different beings such as Buddhas, disciples of the Buddha, Ursus, and Devas were considered capable to transmitting Buddhavacana. The content of such a discourse was then to be collated with the sutras, compared with the vinaya, and evaluated against the nature of the dharma. These texts may then be certified as true buddhavacana by a buddha, a samgha, a small group of elders, or one knowledgeable elder. In Theravada Buddhism In Theravada Buddhism, the standard collection of buddhavacana is the Pali Canon. Some scholars believe that some portions of the Pali Canon and Agamas could contain the actual substance of the historical teachings and possibly even the words of the Buddha. Topic: In East Asian Buddhism. In East Asian Buddhism, what is considered Buddhavacana is collected in the Chinese Buddhist Canon. The most common edition of this is the Taisho Tripit aka According to Venerable Suan Hua from the tradition of Chinese Buddhism, there are five types of beings who may speak the sutras of Buddhism, a Buddha, a disciple of a Buddha, a Deva, a Urzi, or an emanation of one of these beings, however, they must first receive certification from a Buddha that its contents are true dharma. Then these sutras may be properly regarded as buddhavacana. Sometimes texts that are considered commentaries by some are regarded by others as buddhavacana. Shingon Buddhism developed a system that assigned authorship of the early sutras to Gautama Buddha in his physical manifestation, of the Ekayana sutras to the Buddhas as Sambhoakaya, and the Vajrayana texts to the Buddha as Dharmakaya. Topic: In Tibetan Buddhism. In Tibetan Buddhism, what is considered Buddhavacana is collected in the Kangyur. The East Asian and Tibetan Buddhist canons always combined Buddhavacana with other literature in their standard collected editions. However, the general view of what is and is not Buddhavacana is broadly similar between East Asian Buddhism and Tibetan Buddhism. The Tibetan Kangyur, which belongs to the various schools of Tibetan Vajrayana Buddhism, in addition to containing sutras and vinaya, also contains tantras. Topic. Textual traditions The earliest Buddhist texts were passed down orally in Middle Indo-Aryan languages called Prakrits, including Gandhari language, the early Magadhan language and Pali through the use of repetition, communal recitation and mnemonic devices. Doctrinal elaborations were preserved in Abhidharma works and later Karakas verse expositions. As Buddhism spread geographically, these texts were translated into the local language, such as Chinese and Tibetan. The Pali Canon was preserved in Sri Lanka where it was first written down in the 1st century BCE and the Theravadan Pali textual tradition developed there. The Sri Lankan Pali tradition developed extensive commentaries as well as sub-commentaries for the Pali Canon as well as treatises on Abhidhamma. Sutra commentaries and Abhidharma works also exist in Tibetan, Chinese, Korean and other East Asian languages. 
Important examples of non canonical Pali texts are the Visuddhimagga, by Buddhaghosa, which is a compendium of Theravada teachings, and the Mahavamsa, a historical Sri Lankan chronicle. The earliest known Buddhist manuscripts, recovered from the ancient civilization of Gandhara in north central Pakistan near Taxila just southwest of the capital Islamabad, are dated to the 1st century and constitute the Buddhist textual tradition of Gandharan Buddhism, which was an important link between Indian and East Asian Buddhism. After the rise of the Kushans in India, Sanskrit was also widely used to record Buddhist texts. Sanskrit Buddhist literature later became the dominant tradition in India until the decline of Buddhism in India. Around the beginning of the Christian era, a new genre of sutra literature began to be written with a focus on the bodhisattva idea, commonly known as Mahayana great vehicle sutras. Many of the Mahayana sutras were written in Sanskrit and then translated into the Tibetan and Chinese Buddhist canons the Kangyur and the Taisho Tripitaka respectively, which then developed their own textual histories. The Mahayana sutras are traditionally considered by Mahayanists to be the word of the Buddha, but transmitted either in secret, via lineages of supernatural beings such as the Nagas, or revealed directly from other Buddhas or Bodhisattvas. Some 600 Mahayana sutras have survived in Sanskrit, or in Chinese and or Tibetan translation. In the Mahayana tradition there are important works termed shastras, or treatises which attempt to outline the sutra teachings and defend or expand on them. The works of important Buddhist philosophers like Nagarjuna, Vasubandhu and Dharmakirti are generally termed shastras, and were written in Sanskrit. The treatise Awakening of Faith in the Mahayana attributed by the faithful to Asvaosa strongly influenced East Asian Mahayana doctrine and inspired numerous commentaries authored by early Korean and Chinese Buddhist teachers. The late 7th century saw the rise of another new class of Buddhist texts, the Tantras, which outlined new ritual practices and yogic techniques such as the use of mandalas, mudras and fire sacrifices. Buddhist Tantras are key texts in Vajrayana Buddhism, which is the dominant form of Buddhism in Tibet. The division of texts into the traditional three yanas may obscure the process of development that went on, and there is some overlap in the traditional classifications. For instance, there are so-called proto-Mahayana texts, such as the Ahitasena Sutra, which are missing key features that are associated with Mahayana texts. Some Pali texts also contain ideas that later became synonymous with the Mahayana. The Garbhavakranti Sutra is included in both the Vinaya Pitaka of the Malasarvastavada, one of the early schools, and the Ratnakuta, a standard collection of Mahayana sutras. Some Mahayana texts are also thought to display a distinctly tantric character, particularly some of the shorter perfection of wisdom sutras. An early tantra, the Mahavarokana Abhisambodhi Tantra, is also known as the Mahavarokana Sutra. At least some editions of the Kangyur include the Heart Sutra in the Tantra division. Such overlap is not confined to neighboring yanas, at least nine Sravakayana Hinayana. Texts can be found in the Tantra divisions of some editions of the Kangyur. One of them, the Atanadiya Sutra, is also included in the Mikkyo esoteric division of the standard modern collected edition of Sino-Japanese Buddhist literature. A variant of it is also found in the Diga Nikaya of the Pali Canon. Some Buddhist texts evolved to become a virtual canon in themselves, and are referred to as Vipulya or extensive sutras. The Flower Garland Sutra is an example of a single sutra made up of other sutras, many of which, particularly the Gandavyuha Sutra, still circulate as separate texts. Tibetan Buddhism has a unique and special class of texts called terma Tibetan, G -t -e -r -ma. These are texts or ritual objects, etc., believed either composed or hidden by tantric masters and or elementally secreted or encoded in the elements and retrieved, accessed or rediscovered by other tantric masters when appropriate. Termas are discovered by Tertans Tibetan, G -t -e -r stans, whose special function is to reveal these texts. Some termas are hidden in caves or similar places, but a few are said to be mind termas, which are discovered in the mind of the Tertan. The Nyingma school and bon tradition has a large terma literature. Many of the terma texts are said to have been written by Pamamsambhava, who is particularly important to the Nyingmas. Probably the best known terma text is the so called Tibetan Book of the Dead, the Bardo Thodol. Texts of the early schools Although many versions of the texts of the early Buddhist schools exist, the only complete collection of texts to survive in a Middle Indo Aryan language is the Tipitaka of the Theravadan school. 
The other parts of extant versions of the Tripitakas of early schools include the Agamas, which includes texts by the Sarvastivada and the Dharmaguptaka. The Chinese Buddhist canon contains a complete collection of early sutras in Chinese translation, their content is very similar to the Pali, differing in detail but not in the core doctrinal content. Parts of what is likely to be the canon of the Dharmaguptaka can be found amongst the Gandharan Buddhist texts. Several early versions of the Vinaya Pitaka from various schools are also kept in the Chinese Mahayana canon. Topic: Vinaya. The Vinaya literature is primarily concerned with aspects of the monastic discipline. However, Vinaya as a term is also contrasted with Dharma, where the pair Dhamma Vinaya means something like doctrine and discipline. The Vinaya literature in fact contains a considerable range of texts. There are, of course, those that discuss the monastic rules, how they came about, how they developed, and how they were applied. But the Vinaya also contains some doctrinal expositions, ritual and liturgical texts, biographical stories, and some elements of the Jatakas, or birth stories. Paradoxically, the text most closely associated with the Vinaya, and the most frequently used portion of it, the Pratimaksha, is in itself not a canonical text in Theravada, even though almost all of it can be found in the canon. Six complete Vinayas survive Theravada, written in Pali Mula Sarvastivada, written in Sanskrit, but surviving complete only in Tibetan translation Mahasangika, Sarvastivada, Mahishasika, and Dharmagupta, originally in Indian languages, but only surviving in Chinese translation. In addition, portions survive of a number of Vinayas in various languages. The Mahavasta compiled by the Lokottaravadan sub school of the Mahasangika was perhaps originally the preamble to their Vinaya that became detached, hence, rather than dealing with the rules themselves, it takes the form of an extended biography of the Buddha, which it describes in terms of his progression through ten bhumis, or stages. This doctrine was later taken up by the Mahayana in a modified form as Vasubandhu's Ten Stages Sutra. Sutra The sutras Sanskrit, Pali Sutta are mostly discourses attributed to the Buddha or one of his close disciples. They are all, even those not actually spoken by him, considered to be Buddhavakana, the word of the Buddha, just as in the case of all canonical literature. The Buddha's discourses were perhaps originally organized according to the style in which they were delivered. There were originally nine, but later twelve, of these. The Sanskrit forms are Sutra, prose discourses, especially short declarative discourses. Geya, mixed prose and verse discourse. Identified with the Sagathavaga of the Samyutta Nikaya Vyakarana, explanation, analysis. Discourses in question and answer format. Gatha, verse Udana, inspired speech Idiyakta, beginning with Thus has the Bhagavan said Jataka, story of previous life Abhatadharma, concerning wonders and miraculous events. Vipulya either extended discourses or those giving joy cf Mahayana texts. Nidana, in which the teachings are set within their circumstances of origin. Avadana, tales of exploits. Upadesha, defined and considered instructions. The first nine are listed in all surviving agamas, with the other three added in some later sources. In Theravada, at least, they are regarded as a classification of the whole of the scriptures, not just suttas. The scheme is also found in Mahayana texts. However, some time later a new organizational scheme was imposed on the canon, which is now the most familiar. The scheme organizes the suttas into topic. Long discourses These range in length up to 95 pages. The Pali Diga Nikaya contains 34 texts, including the Mahaparinibbana Sutta and the Brahmahala Sutta. The Durgagama of the Dharmagupta also survives, in Chinese translation, and contains 30 sutras. <laughs> Medium-length discourses These are the rest of the sutras of any length, and the Pali Majjhima Nikaya has 152 suttas. The Madhyamagama of the Sarvastivada containing 222 sutras survives in Chinese translation. Topic. Connected discourses 
This grouping consists of many short texts connected by theme, setting, or interlocutor. The Pali Samyutta Nikaya contains more than 2,800 sutras. The Samyuktagama of the Sarvastivada containing only 1,300 sutras survives in Chinese translation. Topic. Numbered discourses Sutras with the same number of doctrinal items, comprise over 2,300 suttas in the Pali Angatara Nikaya. The Chinese canon contains an ekateragama that some scholars think belongs to the Mahasangika school. Topic. Miscellaneous texts Not all schools had this category, but the Pali Kudaka Nikaya has several well-known and loved texts, including the Dhammapada, a collection of sayings and aphorisms. The Udana, a collection of inspired sayings in verse usually with a prose introduction that sets a context of sorts for the saying. The Sutta Nipata, parts of the Sutta Nipata, such as the Athakavaga and Parayanavaga, are thought by some scholars to represent the earliest strata of the written canon. Many of the features of later texts, such as numbered lists of teachings, or complex doctrinal categories, are not present. Theragatha and Thuragatha two collections of biographical verse related to the disciples of the Buddha. Jataka, poems related to the so-called birth stories, which recount former lives of the Buddha. These remain popular in many forms of Buddhism. Many of these texts are available in translation as well as in the original language. The Dhammapada, for instance, has a Pali version, three Chinese versions, a Tibetan version, and a Khotanese version. Topic: <inaudible> Abhidharma. Abhidharma in Pali, Abhidhamma means further dharma and is concerned with the analysis of phenomena. It grew initially out of various lists of teachings such as the 37 Bodhipaksika dharmas or the 37 factors leading to awakening. The Abhidharma literature is chiefly concerned with the analysis of phenomena and the relationships between them. The Theravada Abhidharma survives in the Pali Canon. Outside of the Theravada monasteries the Pali Abhidharma texts are not well known. A Sarvastivada Abhidharma, composed in Sanskrit, survives in Chinese and Tibetan traditions. Though the Theravadan Abhidhamma is well preserved and best known, it should be noted that a number of the early 18 schools each had their own distinct Abhidharma collection with not very much common textual material, though sharing methodology. Not all schools accepted the Abhidharma as canonical. The Sautrantika, for instance, held that the canon stopped with the Vinaya and Sutras. The rejection by some schools that dharmas i.e. phenomena are ultimately real, which the Theravada Abhidhamma, for instance, insists, is thought to be an important factor in the origin of the Mahayana. Other texts One early text not usually regarded as Buddhavacana is probably the Melinda Panha literally the questions of Melinda. This text is in the form of a dialogue between Nagasena, and the Indo-Greek king Menander Pali, Melinda. It is a compendium of doctrine, and covers a range of subjects. It is included in some editions of the Pali canon. Other early texts which are usually not considered canonical are the Netapakarana and the Petakopadisa, the Book of Guidance, and Instruction on the Pataka. The Dhyana Sutras are a group of early Buddhist meditation texts which contain meditation teachings from the Sarvastivada school along with some early proto-Mahayana meditations. They were mostly the work of Buddhist yoga teachers from Kashmir and were influential in Chinese Buddhism. The Buddhist poet Asvaosa composed an epic poem on the life of the Buddha called the Buddhakarita in the early 2nd century CE. Texts in the Theravada tradition The Pali texts have an extensive commentarial literature much of which is still untranslated. These are attributed to scholars working in Sri Lanka such as Buddhaghosa 5th century CE and Dhammapala. There are also sub-commentaries or commentaries on the commentaries. Buddhaghosa was also the author of the Visuddhimagga, or Path of Purification, which is a manual of doctrine and practice according to the Mahavihara tradition of Sri Lanka and according to Nanamoli Bhikkhu is regarded as the principal non-canonical authority of the Theravada. A similar albeit shorter work is the Vimittimagga. 
Another highly influential Pali-Theravada work is the Abhidhammatha Sangaha 11th or 12th century, a short introductory summary to the Abhidhamma. Buddhaghosa is known to have worked from Buddhist commentaries in the Sri Lankan Sinhala language, which are now lost. Sri Lankan literature in the vernacular contains many Buddhist works, including as classical Sinhala poems such as the Muvadevavada the story of the Bodhisattva's birth as King Mukadeva, 12th century, and the Sasadavada the story of the Bodhisattva's birth as a hare, 12th century, as well as prose works like the Dampiyachuva Gatapadaya, commentary on the Blessed Doctrine, a commentary on words and phrases in the Pali Dhammapada. The Pali textual tradition spread into Burma and Thailand where Pali scholarship continued to flourish with such works as the Agavamsa of Sadaniti and the Jinakalamali of Ratanapanya. Pali literature continued to be composed into the modern era, especially in Burma, and writers such as Mahasi Sayadaw translated some of their texts into Pali. There are numerous Tantric Theravada texts, mostly from Southeast Asia. This tradition flourished in Cambodia and Thailand before the 19th century reformist movement of Rama IV. One of these texts has been published in English by the Pali Text Society as Manual of a Mystic. Burmese Buddhist literature developed unique poetic forms from the 1450s onwards. A major type of poetry is the Pyui, long and embellished translations of Pali Buddhist works, mainly Jatakas. A famous example of Pyui poetry is the Kui Khan Pyui, the Pyui in nine sections, 1523. Burmese commentaries are Nisayas and were used to teach Pali. The 19th century saw a flowering of Burmese Buddhist literature in various genres including religious biography, Abhidharma, legal literature and meditation literature. An influential text of Thai literature is the Three Worlds According to King Ruing. 1345 by Phya Lithai, which is an extensive cosmological and visionary survey of the Thai Buddhist universe. Mahayana texts See Mahayana sutras for historical background and a list of some sutras categorized by source. Perfection of wisdom texts These deal with prajna wisdom or insight. Wisdom in this context means the ability to see reality as it truly is. They do not contain an elaborate philosophical argument, but simply try to point to the true nature of reality, especially through the use of paradox. The basic premise is a radical non-dualism, in which every and any dichotomist way of seeing things is denied, so phenomena are neither existent, nor non-existent, but are marked by sunyata, emptiness, and absence of any essential unchanging nature. The perfection of wisdom in one letter illustrates this approach by choosing to represent the perfection of prajna with the Sanskrit Pali short of vowel a, pronounced which, as a prefix, negates a word's meaning, e.g., changing svabhava to asvabhava, with essence, to without essence, cf. mu, which is the first letter of Indic alphabets, and that, as a sound on its own, is the most neutral, basic of speech sounds, cf. aum and bija. Many sutras are known by the number of lines, or slokas, that they contained. Edward Kahn's, who translated nearly all of the Perfection of Wisdom sutras into English, identified four periods of development in this literature. 100 BCE to 100 CE, written Agunasamkayagatha and the Astasaharika, 8,000 lines. 100 to 300 CE, a period of elaboration in which versions in 18,000, 25,000, and 100,000 lines are produced. Possibly also the Diamond Sutra. 300 to 500 CE, a period of condensation, producing the well-known Heart Sutra and the perfection of wisdom in one letter. 500, 1,000 CE, texts from this period begin to show a tantric influence. The perfection of wisdom texts have influenced every Mahayana school of Buddhism. Topic. Sadharma Pundarika Also called the Lotus Sutra, White Lotus Sutra, or Sutra on the White Lotus of the Sublime Dharma, Sanskrit, Sadharma Pundarika Sutra Sadharma Pundarika Sutra, Miao Fa Lian Hua Jing Cn, Miao Fa Lian Hua Jing, JP, Miao Ho Renge Kyo. 
Probably composed in its earliest form in the period 100 BCE 100 CE, the sutra proposes that the three yanas Shravakayana, Pratyekabuddhayana, and Bodhisattvayana are not in fact three different paths leading to three goals, but one path, with one goal. The earlier teachings are said to be of skillful means in order to help beings of limited capacities. Notable for the re appearance of the Buddha Prabhudaratna, who had died several eons earlier, because it suggests that a Buddha is not inaccessible after his parinirvana, and also that his life span is said to be inconceivably long because of the accumulation of merit in past lives. This idea, though not necessarily from this source, forms the basis of the later Trikaya doctrine. Later associated particularly with the Tiantai in China, Tendai school in Japan, and the Nichiren schools in Japan. Topic. Pure Land Sutras There are three major sutras that fall into this category, the Infinite Life Sutra, also known as the Larger Pure Land Sutra, the Amitabha Sutra, also known as the Smaller Pure Land Sutra, and the Contemplation Sutra also known as the Visualization Sutra. These texts describe the origins and nature of the Western Pure Land in which the Buddha Amitabha resides. They list the 48 vows made by Amitabha as a bodhisattva by which he undertook to build a pure land where beings are able to practice the Dharma without difficulty or distraction. The sutras state that beings can be reborn there by pure conduct and by practices such as thinking continuously of Amitabha, praising him, recounting his virtues, and chanting his name. These Pure Land Sutras and the practices they recommend became the foundations of Pure Land Buddhism, which focus on the salvific power of faith in the vows of Amitabha. Topic. The Vimalakirti Nirdesha Sutra Composed in its earliest form some time before 150 CE, the Bodhisattva Vimalakirti appears in the guise of a layman in order to teach the Dharma. Seen by some as a strong assertion of the value of lay practice. Doctrinally similar to the perfection of wisdom texts, a major theme is the Buddhafield Buddha which was influential on Pure Land schools. Very popular in China, Korea and Japan where it was seen as being compatible with Confucian values. Topic. Samadhi Sutras Amongst the very earliest Mahayana texts, the Samadhi Sutras are a collection of sutras focused on the attainment of profound states of consciousness reached in meditation, perhaps suggesting that meditation played an important role in early Mahayana includes the Pratyupana Sutra and the Shurangama Samadhi Sutra. Topic. Confession Sutras The Triskanda Sutra, and the Savarnaprabhasa Sutra or Golden Light Sutra, which focus on the practice of confession of faults. The Golden Light Sutra became especially influential in Japan, where one of its chapters on the Universal Sovereign Sanskrit, Chakravartin was used by the Japanese emperors to legitimize their rule, and it provided a model for a well-run state. Topic. The Avatamsaka Sutra A large composite text consisting of several parts, most notably the Dasapumika Sutra and the Gandavyuha Sutra. It exists in three successive versions, two in Chinese and one in Tibetan. New sutras were added to the collection in both the intervals between these. The Gandavyuha Sutra is thought to be the source of a sect that was dedicated specifically to Vairokhana, and that later gave rise to the Mahavarokhana Abhisambodhi Tantra. The Mahavarokhana Abhisambodhi became one of the two central texts in Shingon Buddhism and was included in the Tibetan canon as a tantra of the Karya class. The Avatamsaka Sutra became the central text for the Hua Yen JP. Kegon school of Buddhism, the most important doctrine of which is the interpenetration of all phenomena. Topic. Third Turning Sutras These sutras primarily teach the doctrine of Vijnapti Matra or representation only, associated with the Yogacara school. The Sandhinirmokana Sutra is the earliest surviving sutra in this class and according to some Gelugpa authorities the only one. This sutra divides the teachings of the Buddha into three classes, which it calls the three turnings of the wheel of the Dharma. To the first turning, it ascribes the Agamas of the Shravakas, to the second turning the lower Mahayana sutras including the Prajna Paramita sutras, and finally sutras like itself are deemed to comprise the third turning. 
Moreover, the first two turnings are considered, in this system of classification, to be provisional while the third group is said to present the final truth without a need for further explication Tathagatagarbha class sutras Especially the Tathagatagarbha Sutra, the Srimaladevi Simanada Sutra, Srimala Sutra, the Angulimalaya Sutra, the Anunatva Apurnatva Nirdesa Sutra, and the Mahayana Mahapurnirvana Sutra, which differs in character from the Pali Mahaparinibbana Sutta. These texts teach that every being has a Tathagatagarbha, variously translated as Buddha nature, Buddha seed, Buddha matrix. It is this Buddha nature, Buddha essence or Buddha principle, this aspect of every being that is itself already enlightened, that enables beings to be liberated. One of the most important responses of Buddhism to the problem of immanence and transcendence. The Tathagatagarbha doctrine was very influential in East Asian Buddhism, and the idea in one form or another can be found in most of its schools. The well-known Lankavatara Sutra, composed sometime around the 4th century, is sometimes included in the Vijnapti Matra group associated with the Yogacara teachings, however D.T. Suzuki sees the Lankavatara as clearly pre-dating and distinguished from Yogacara. The Lankavatara teaches Chittamatra mind only, not that of Vijnaptamatra of the Yogacara. Also, central to the Lankavatara is the identity of the Alayavnyana with the Tathagata Garbha and the Lankavatara's central message that the Tathagata Garbha is what makes possible the turning inward of awareness to realize the Buddha's psychological transformation in practical life, while the Tathagata Garbha system was unknown or ignored by the progenitors of the Yogacara system. The Lankavatara Sutra was influential in the Chan or Zen schools. Collected sutras These are two large sutras, which are actually collections of other sutras. The Maharatnakuta Sutra contains 49 individual works, and the Mahasamnipatha Sutra is a collection of 17 shorter works. Both seem to have been finalized by about the 5th century, although some parts of them are considerably older. Transmigration sutras These include a number of sutras that focus on actions that lead to existence in the various spheres of existence, or that expound the doctrine of the twelve links of pratitya samyutpada or dependent origination. Discipline sutras These focus on the principles that guide the behavior of bodhisattvas. They include the Kashyapa Parivarta, the Bodhisattva Pratimaksa Sutra, and the Brahmahala Sutra. Topic. Sutras devoted to individual figures This is a large number of sutras that describe the nature and virtues of a particular Buddha or Bodhisattva and or their pure land, including Manjusri, Kasitagarbha, the Buddha Akshobhya, and Bhaisajyaguru also known as the Medicine Buddha. Topic. Proto Mahayana Sutras Early in the 20th century, a cache of texts was found in a mound near Gilgit, Afghanistan. Among them was the Ahitasena Sutra. The Ahitasena Sutra appears to be a mixture of Mahayana and pre-Mahayana ideas. It occurs in a world where monasticism is the norm, which is typical of the Pali Suttas. There is none of the usual antagonism towards the Shravakas also called the Hinayana or the notion of Arahantship, which is typical of Mahayana sutras such as the White Lotus, or Vimalakirti Nirdesha. However, the sutra also has an arahant seeing all the Buddha fields, it is said that reciting the name of the sutra will save beings from suffering in the hell realms, and a meditative practice is described that allows the practitioner to see with the eyes of a Buddha, and to receive teachings from them that are very much typical of Mahayana sutras. Non-Buddhavacana texts The Mahayana commentarial and exegetical literature is vast. Many commentarial texts are called shastras, a by-word used when referring to a scripture. Extending this meaning, the shastra is commonly used to mean a treatise or text written in explanation of some idea, especially in matters involving religion. In Buddhism, a shastra is often a commentary written at a later date to explain an earlier scripture or sutra. 
The Mulamadhyamika Karika, or Root Verses on the Middle Way, by Nagarjuna is a seminal text on the Madhyamika philosophy, shares much of the same subject matter as the Perfection of Wisdom Sutras, although it is not strict a commentary on them. The 9th century Indian Buddhist Shantideva produced two texts. The Bodhikaryavatara has been a strong influence in many schools of the Mahayana. It is notably a favorite text of the 14th Dalai Lama. The text begins with an elaborate ritual worship section, but goes on to expound the six perfections. The ninth chapter is a critique of various views on perfect wisdom from the Madhyamika point of view. Shantideva also produced the Shikshasamukhaya, which is a compendium of doctrines from a huge range of Mahayana sutras, some of which no longer exist and therefore are known only through his quotes. Asanga, associated with the Yogacara school of Mahayana thought, is said to have received many texts directly from the Bodhisattva Maitreya in the Tushita god realm, including Madhyantavabhaga, the Mahayana Sutralamara, and the Abhisamayalamkara. He is also said to have personally written the Mahayana Samgraha, the Abhidharma Samakaya, a compendium of Abhidharma thought that became the standard text for many Mahayana schools especially in Tibet, and the Yogacara Bhumi although the latter text appears to have had several authors. Asanga's brother Vasubandhu wrote a large number of texts associated with the Yogacara including, Trivabhava Nirdesha, Vimshadika, Trimshika, and the Abhidharmakosa Bhasya although this work predates his conversion to the Mahayana and a minority of scholars speculate that there may have been two different Vasubandhus who composed these works. Most influential in the East Asian Buddhist tradition was probably his 30 verses on consciousness only. Dignaga is associated with a school of Buddhist logic that tried to establish which texts were valid sources of knowledge see also epistemology. He produced the Pramana Samakaya, and later Dharmakirti wrote the Pramana Vartika, which was a commentary and reworking of the Dignaga text. The awakening of faith in the Mahayana attributed to Ashvagasha was influential in East Asian Buddhism, especially the Hua Yen school of China, and its Japanese equivalent, Kegon. Ashvagasha is also celebrated for his plays. Topic: <inaudible> East Asian works. The early period of the development of Chinese Buddhism was concerned with the collection and translation of texts into Chinese and the creation of the Chinese Buddhist canon. This was often done by traveling overland to India, as recorded in the Great Tang records on the western regions by the monk Zanzong. East Asian Buddhism began to develop its own unique literature with the rise of the Tiantai school and its major representative, Zhiyi 538 CE, who wrote important commentaries on the Lotus Sutra as well as the first major comprehensive work on meditation composed in China, the Mohe Zigon. Another important school of Chinese Buddhism is Huayan, which focused on developing their philosophical texts from the Avatamsaka Sutra. An important patriarch of this school is Fazang who wrote many commentaries and treatises. Zen Buddhism developed a large literary tradition based on the teachings and sayings of Chinese Zen masters. One of the key texts in this genre is the Platform Sutra attributed to Zen Patriarch Huning. It gives an autobiographical account of his succession as Chan Patriarch, as well as teachings about Chan theory and practice. Other texts are koan collections, which are compilations of the sayings of Chinese masters such as the Blue Cliff Record and the Gateless Gate. Another key genre is that of compilations of Zen master biographies, such as the Transmission of the Lamp. Buddhist poetry was also an important contribution to the literature of the tradition. After the arrival of Chinese Buddhism in Japan, Korea and Vietnam, they developed their own traditions and literature in the local language. Topic. Vajrayana texts Topic. Buddhist tantras The Tibetan Buddhist canon includes a number of Nikaya-related texts from the Mula Sarvastivada school, as well as Mahayana sutras. However, it is the specifically Vajrayana texts that most strongly characterize it. They are considered to be the word of the Buddha and the Tibetan Kangyur contains translations of almost 500 tantras. The texts are typically concerned with elaborate rituals and meditations. A late Tibetan tradition has made a fourfold classification into topic. Kriya tantras Kriya tantras. These form a large subgroup that appeared between the 2nd and 6th centuries. 
The Kriya Tantras focus on ritual actions. Each centers on a particular Buddha or Bodhisattva, and many are based on Dharanis. Examples include the Mahamega Sutra, the Arya Manjushri Mula Kalpa, the Subahu Parapursha Sutra, and the Aparimataya Jnana Hrdaya Dharani. Also included in this category are some Mahayana texts such as the Heart Sutra and, in some editions, versions of some texts found in the Pali Canon. Charya Tantras Karya Tantras. This is a small class of texts that probably emerged after the 6th century and are entirely centered on the worship of the Buddha Vairokana. The best known example is the Maha Vairokanabhisambodhi Tantra, also known as the Mahavairokana Sutra, which became a foundational text for the Shingon school of Japan. <laughs> Yoga Tantras Yoga Tantras likewise focus on Vairokana, and include the Sarva Tathagata Tattva Samgraha Tantra and the Sarva Durgati Parashodana Tantra. The Shurangama Sutra and the Shurangama Mantra from which it called the comes can be included in this category. According to Venerable Tripitaka Master Bhikshu Sramana Suan was, Shurangama Mantra Commentary. Buddhist Text Translation Society of the City of 10,000 Buddhas, 1981, Volume 1, the Shurangama Mantra mystically and literally includes all of the Buddha Dharma in its entirety, and its focus is on the five Dhyana Buddhas Varachana, Amitabha, Akshobhya, Ratnasambhava, and Amogasiddhi, with stress on Varachana and Ashobhya Buddhas and their retinues of Dharmapalas and wrathful deities in male and female forms, such as Varapani, wrathful Manjushri, Mahakala, Tara, Pandaravasini, Prakruti, Uchi Shushna fire head Vajra, Brahma, Indra, Shiva as Rudra, Radri Umapati form of Vajrayajini, Narayana, Ganapati, various Dakinis, Naga kings, Yaksha kings, Rakshasha kings, and many other Dharma protectors of the Buddhist pantheon and Vedic pantheon. The primary wrathful goddess of the Shurangama Mantra Tantric practice is the great white umbrella deity form of Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva, an important practice in Tibetan Buddhism. Anatara Tantras Anatara Tantras. The most advanced class of Tantra is the Anuttarayoga Tantra, which focus on mental transformation and less on ritual actions. These are sometimes further divided into the so-called Father Tantras and Mother Tantras. First there are the Yogatara, or Higher Union, Tantras, also known as Father Tantras, or Skillful Means, Sanskrit, Upaya, Tantras. They focus on the Buddha Akshobhya and his consort Mamaki. The Guya Samaja Tantra comes from this class of Tantras, dating probably from the 8th century. Secondly Prajna or Mother Tantras, also known as Yogini Tantras, dating from the late 8th century. Akshobhya is still the central figure, but he now appears in his wrathful form as Haruka. Female figures take on a much greater significance, becoming as important as male figures, if not more so. The Samvara Tantra was translated into Tibetan in the 8th century. Other members of this class, such as the Hevajra Tantra, appeared in the 10th century. The Kalachakra Tantra is sometimes said to be an Advaya or non-dual Tantra. It appeared very late in the development of Tantric Buddhism, in the mid-11th century, and is written in classical Sanskrit, rather than the usual mixture of Prakrit and the characteristic, elusive speech, of twilight language, Sanskrit, Samdhyabhasha. For the first time the teachings refer to the Adibuddha, or primordial Buddha, Anuttaratantra is known in the Nyingma school as Mahayoga. This school also has a collection of tantras of its own, not found in the other Tibetan schools. Textual evidence suggests that some of these texts are in fact Shaivite tantras adopted and adapted to Buddhist purposes, and many similarities in iconography and ritual can be seen in them. Other products of the Vajrayana literature. A sadhana is a tantric spiritual practices text used by practitioners, primarily to practice the mandala or a particular yidam, or meditation deity. The sadhanamala is a collection of sadhanas. Vajrayana adepts, known as Mahasiddha, often expounded their teachings in the form of songs of realization. Collections of these songs such as the Karyajiti, or the Charyapada are still in existence. The Dohakosha is a collection of Doha songs by the yogi Saraha from the 9th century. 
A collection known in English as the Hundred Thousand Songs of Milarepa was composed by Tibetan Buddhist yogi Milarepa and is especially popular amongst members of the Kagyu school. Terma are Tibetan Buddhist texts, hidden to be rediscovered at a later date. Pamamsambhava and Yeshe Sogyal wrote and hid most termas, although texts have also been hidden by figures such as Makag Labdran. The best known terma text is probably the Bardo Thodol, or Awakening in the Bardo State, also known as the Tibetan Book of the Dead. The person who finds a terma text is known as a Tertan. The Blue Annals Standard Tibetan, Deb Ther Snan Po completed in 1476 CE, authored by Golo Zhanupal Tibetan, Gos Lo Gzhon Nu Di Pal, 1392-1481, is a historical survey of Tibetan Buddhism with a marked ecumenical view, focusing upon the dissemination of various sectarian traditions throughout Tibet. Namtar, or spiritual biographies, are another popular form of Tibetan Buddhist texts, whereby the teachings and spiritual path of a practitioner are explained through a review of their life story. Kakai wrote a number of treatises on Vajrayana Buddhism that are distinct from his Shingon Buddhism. See also Notes References Bibliography <references> 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 The Rider Encyclopedia of Eastern Philosophy and Religion. London, Rider, 1989. Nakamura, Hajime, 1980. Indian Buddhism, A Survey with Bibliographical Notes, 1st Edition, Japan, 1980. 1st Indian Edition, Delhi, 1987. ISBN 81-208-0272-1. Skilton, Andrew. A Concise History of Buddhism. Birmingham, Windhorse Publications, 1994. Warder, A. K. 1970. Indian Buddhism. Mudalal Banarsidas, Delhi, 2nd Revised Edition, 1980. Williams, Paul. Mahayana Buddhism, The Doctrinal Foundations. London, Routledge, 1989. Zerker, E. 1959. The Buddhist Conquest of China, The Spread and Adaptation of Buddhism in Early Medieval China, 2nd Edition. Reprint, with additions and corrections, Leiden, E. J. Brill, 1972. Susan Murcott. The First Buddhist Women Translations and Commentary on the Thuragatha, 1991. Topic. External links Online Dharma Libraries The Buddhist Text Translation Society Pali Canon in English Translation incomplete. Bibliography of translations from the Chinese Buddhist canon Buddhist canonical text titles and translations in English Beyond the Tipitaka, a field guide to post-canonical Pali literature Bibliography of Indian philosophy, Karl Potter, includes lists of available translations and known or estimated dates of composition of many Buddhist sutras. How old is the Suttapitaka? The Relative Value of Textual and Epigraphical Sources for the Study of Early Indian Buddhism by Alexander Wynne, St. John's College, Oxford University, 2003. History of Early Buddhism in Sri Lanka, the Mahawansa.